Night Raven signing on here with part two of the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild the Great Plateau tutorial. We have in part one we went through the beginning of the game, finished the shrine one, and up to the top up back to the tower, and we were on our way to shrine number two. So in this tutorial, we're going to get to shrine two, finish shrine two, and then do some cooking and get ready for the next section before we do Shrine 3. And then we'll move on to Shrine 4. So, if you need assistance doing Shrine 2, figuring out where to go, where things are, and how to start the process to get to Shrine 3, then this tutorial is for you. This tutorial, if you missed Part 1, um, it's going to be like the quickest, easiest route. There's not going to be a lot of wandering, not a lot of... There will be gathering of items, but not like out-of-the-way gathering and bare minimum fighting. Just the, the bare minimum of what you need to get through the shrines to get off the Great Plateau. So, let's jump right on in. We started at the bottom of the Great Plateau Tower, and we are going to head this way towards the red waypoint beam is our shrine number two. That's where we are going to head. And for some reason, I am always doing this shrine at night. Never fails. Always head to this shrine at night. Okay, so to get to this shrine, I'm going to get us to the top of this hill here so we can see the lovely world below down here. Stretch chest up in that water. Okay, so there is shrine two amongst these ruins. And we're going to use our scope, which was pressing down on R. There are these weird looking, like, statue things. Those are called guardians. Some are asleep, some are not. So, we are going to head over here to the very front of the Eastern Abbey ruins, about right here is where we're gonna kind of go in. So here, I'll go ahead and place the pin. We're going to kind of work our way down here. Let's go ahead and grab this treasure chest with magnesis. We got us some amber. Okay, so it is our first night on the Great Plateau. One thing that happens at night is monsters pop up out of the ground, skeletons, so be uh, forewarned that monsters will pop up out of nowhere. Alright, and the reason why we're starting here in the front, oh, we got some keys. is we want to, the quickest way to dart around the guardian that will wake up, I'm going to go ahead and tell you there's a guardian that wakes up, and your first experience with guardians is absolutely terrifying, and you like, you lose your breath and everything, it's, 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 it's scary. <laughs> um, there's special music that plays, it just adds to the whole situation. So as you guys just saw, you can, on old guardians, you can find parts that you will need later. So, you you do want to approach guardians to see if you can do that. But you will learn how to tell if a guardian may wake up or not. So, this one definitely won't. See how it's like half kind of sticking out of the ground, it's kind of being all like weird, like definitely decayed. We're gonna pop over to this guy. This guy looks like he could possibly wake up, but he's not. 
and then we got we got that guy over there, and then we have this guy. So, which one do you think is going to wake up? So, we're going to pop from behind here to run. I was trying to get to that doorway. Okay, so it has woken up and it sees us. So, run behind this doorway really quick. Take a breath, breathe, don't pass out or hyperventilate. If you wait long enough, it will cool off. It will go, the red will go away. And now he's just blue. Now he's just on, but he's not alert. And you can wait for it to turn its eye. Alright, now for your learning purposes, I'm going to stand here so you know when it beam goes off. Okay. Yes! That's when you run. Um, it goes long, and then it gets really, really short, and then it starts sucking in the light. Okay, so I died just for you guys. So we're obviously going to hit continue. Okay, so that's what it looks like when it's going to shoot at you. So that's when you know you need to get out or hide. You're, you can, when you get better shields later on, wooden shields will not work. You can deflect the beam back at them, but that takes lots of practice. Alright, so we're going to go ahead. It's going to redo its little video. That's how you can save your stamina. We're actually gonna grab those things real quick. And we'll grab those real quick. So again, when it starts getting real fast like that. That's when you that's when you hide. Okay. So we don't have a way to get through this, so we are going to climb. Oh, and that noise we just heard is the stuff goblins. That's that's the skeleton monster I was telling you about. So we're gonna pop down and you strike them, and then you attack their head. If the head is not destroyed, it will reattach to the bones. You can also throw weapons. There must be another stuff cobbling around here somewhere because that one's still, still up. Oh, okay, yeah. So you can throw weapons by pressing and holding R, aiming, and then let it go. Um, if your weapon's like about to break, that's like a really good way to deal a lot of damage because it's gonna break anyway. Um, it deals more damage when you throw it. So let's go ahead and get rid of this guy. And then their arms, uh, the Bokoblin arm is actually a, a weapon. It's a very weak weapon that breaks really easily. And it's also creepy because it just moves. Like even when it's on your back, it wiggles like that. I, mean, I, just, I just don't like them. Um, okay, so. We're gonna activate shrine number two. Activate its gate. It is now a travel point. All right, we're gonna examine. Okay, shrine number two. Javais shrine. This is your bomb trial, so we are going to get bombs. That's my favorite rune, I think, out of all of them. All right, so we've got remote bomb now. We have two types. There's the round and the square. Round ones roll, square ones do not. Oh. 
So I press L. And then you press A to drop it and the round one roll. Or you could have pressed R to throw it. Press L to detonate. Make sure you are far enough back because you will damage yourself. You can take damage from these. By pressing up, you can swap between them um, just like the weapons. The C square ones, they don't roll. Um, if you don't want to detonate, pick it back up and press B and it puts it away. You don't have to run, I just really like to run. Alright, let's get this treasure chest. Another weapon. Now you can, you do have limited weapon space, I am going to say that. Alright, so let's swap back to the tree. and now well, let's throw this time. get off of it and let it roll over and then get rid of all of them. Your preference, however you want to do it. Okay, so when you come out here, you see all kinds of stuff happening. So we see this ball. You do not have to get this ball. Do not think you've got to try and get that ball. It's an example of what is happening or what needs to be done in this area. So we're going to come over here on the far left. And we're, we're actually going to climb up in here and let it chunk us over here to get this treasure chest. Because who doesn't want to be like shoved by a giant cement block and shoved through the air to a platform that you hope you land on, right? Alright, so then we're going to come back down, come back up these stairs. Okay, and then these these are little paths. If you look in the shrines, these help guide you where to go. We're gonna come up here and see this neat little shoot looking thing that a round bomb just so happens to fit nicely in. Go all the way, and then where to go? Where did our bomb go? Okay, our bomb got stuck. Let's do that again. <laughs> there is a loading time after you use it. You can't just immediately use it. So there is some form of, you know, thinking ahead. There we go. Now we can detonate. Now you can either let that chunk you or you can just pop down here and climb up the ladder. Here. Pretty simple, straightforward. Come up to the altar and examine it. If you want to skip this part, you can hit plus. If you want to see what the monk has to say to you, keep on watching. All right. Yep. Let's clear our pathway. Okay. So. Next location, or next shrine we want to get to is that one way up top there, the purple one. So, if we check out our map, we want to go over this way. So we are actually going to head here, let me, let's remove this pin, the stamp. We're actually going to head right here to this little square thing, which ha happens to be a house, or hut, really. All right, so we are going to come out here. We're actually going to run over here and search this old guardian. And we're going to come over here and search this old guardian. Okay. 
Oh, this one wakes up. Don't go to that one. Does this one wake up? No. Now, this one doesn't wake up. And I don't want to search this one yet because there's another room that we're going to learn that can come in handy to get extra parts out of this one. So we're not gonna we're not gonna search that one. You can search it if you want. I'm not gonna search it. Right, I'm gonna come back to it. Oh. Is this the one we just searched? Okay, yeah, that's the one we've already searched. They did a very good job on that guardian music. Okay, so that one didn't see us. We're gonna dart. We're gonna wait. We're gonna dart. Cool. Okay, there is a treasure chest amongst these ruins somewhere. Okay. You get real good at running. There's another guardian. I think somewhere. There's a rock. Yeah. Nothing under it. Treasure chest in here. Maybe there's not. Okay, there's not. So, okay, let's go up this hill. a large range I forget how far some of them can shoot yeah it can it can totally see me way up here Woo, run. Run. that was real close that was real close be careful okay so when you get up the hill we're going to see some trees let's use our scope here all right so we got some monsters over in a little camp over there there's a, a hive. Those are rare to find, and you can use the hive for things. But they, the bees, or whatever they're called in the game, chase you. So, I wait till you're really skilled at running and hiding to get those. There's the hut that we're going for, and then there's more enemies down this way. So... Another thing I'm going to show you guys really quick, let me get a one-handed weapon, that's a two-handed, okay, traveler sword. You can cut grass, which finds crickets and lizards and things, some, very rarely do you find money, in older Zelda games, you found rupees in grass all the time, you don't really find them in Breath of the Wild. But you can find fairies because Link is a pure heart. If you, instead of just hit, <laughs> slicing with Y, if you press and hold and then spin, you unlock, like you cut like the whole area. Now there are some people like me who find cutting grass very therapeutic and obsessive compulsive about it and will... We'll, we'll cut a whole mountainside because I just, there's just something about cutting grass that I, we just, some of us just really like. And then there's the whole like, you you cut one area, you gotta, you just, you gotta cut all of it. Okay, I won't keep doing it for y'all's sake, but that's, you know, that is a way to catch critters and such. We're 
kind of avoiding that camp just for the sake of life. getting to where we need to go. There is another enemy camp down that way. Okay, we're going to come to the back side of the little hut because we want these green shrooms. These are stamella shrooms. They increase stamina when used to cook with or in an elixir. Okay. Alrighty, so this is like the little old man's house. This little cooking pit. So see, this fire pit is different than the original one we cooked the apples in. This one actually has like a cooking pot. And then over there we can actually see the old man chopping at a tree. So we're actually going to go in. Um, I'm going to actually put that torch back. I only picked it up so that I could get rid of the question marks. Okay, so... Here's his house. Here's some. We're gonna take some his food. Here's his bed. There's another axe. I'm gonna leave that one because we still have the other one. And then I have. There's, there's a thing with Link and Pots. Um, gotta break. Pots. There's pots to be broken. We've got to break them. That's just just all the rule. All right, we're gonna pick up these spicy peppers and then read his little journal here. Now I'm going to just speed read through it. I'm not going to like read it, read it. I'm only reading it for the purposes of the tutorial. You need to read it to find out about a piece of clothing called the warm du dublet, dubet, dublet, dubet. I don't know how to say it. The, the warm jacket is what we are going to call it. Um, to get the warm jacket. We have to recreate a recipe. So in his book he mentions you can use foods to like keep you warm in cold areas in which we are about to go to a cold area. Um, so here's a bird. You can hunt on the game. So we are actually going to go to inventory. Okay, we have a bow equipped. So we are going to hit ZR and aim at the pigeon bird. And we now have raw drumsticks. You get two for that size bird. And we can use them for recipes later. Right there is a Hylian lizard. They are fast. So you either need to sneak up on them or be wearing sneaky clothing or use a sneaking elixir. Running after them. They're, they're, they're too fast. Okay. So we're going to talk to the old man. So, he's going to talk about making a tree land where you want it to land so you can use it for different purposes. Say, a bridge. So, he's going to go sit down. So, say we have this huge cliff here. We want to get across that cliff because that shrine we want is up there. Okay, we can't we can't see it. But there's there's our beam. So the shrine is up there. So we we want to take a tree and make a bridge. We'll cut that. So wherever his he's wherever he's facing, basically wherever his hips are facing, that's where the tree is going to fall. Right. 
And by cutting a tree, we now have growth leaves. They are weapons that I did not realize I picked up with a cotton arm. Alright, this is about to break. Let's drop this and let's, let's drop that. So, it blows wind. So, these are great for if you happen to need to raft across water or something. You can use it as a, kind of like a sail. Be very careful trying to climb onto the tree. You shall fall to your death. If you do not walk across it, you can either run or walk kind of slowly. If I run across it, I'm gonna fall off. So I just very carefully walk across. Slow baby steps if you need to. Okay, there are some bokoblins over here that you are going to have to defeat. Or else they'll throw rocks at you while you're trying to climb. Um, there's the question mark that I mentioned in tutorial one. Oh, I might need a better. I really like spears because your enemy can't get near you. He's mad I took his weapon. So see, they'll actually dig up rocks. And break so if you're climbing, that's that's not good. Um, side note, rocks that look like that can be blown up. There is something behind it. We will not worry about that right now. Um, okay, so this is where we need to be to get to the shrine. Now, as you can see, it's really high up. There are ledges that are like kind of closer together. So, you can either go ho and go for it and make sure you get to each ledge, or we can go make an elixir with stamina to make sure we make it across. So, by making an elixir, you could cook like a couple of these stamella shrooms together. So, we are just going to kind of go for it. So, make sure your wheel feels all the way up. This one is the closest little hump. So, we're going to kind of press B and do like a running jump. And then, shortest route to the ledge. Because I don't have any stamina elixirs or food, I'm not going to really worry about collecting a bunch of the rush rooms that we see around up here. I'll grab what's like we're like more close to, but I'm not going to go out of my way to get some. Make sure we feel all the way up. So this one over here is the closest. See how he kind of does that jump start thing? Okay, that's the next closest. <laughs> this section was designed for you to be able to do it without um, elixirs. You just gotta be paying attention to where you're going. So that would have been a little bit too far. <gasps> no, what happened? Okay. And that happens, you just fall off. Well darn. Okay, so I've reclimbed back up to where I just randomly fell off at. Um, and because it is 9.30, that means there are still goblins up top. Um, so you wanna be careful when you like, or when you get to the very top, you need to be ready to fight them if they see you. So. You want to try to avoid jumping because you may need to, like, run. 
Okay, so when you get about right here, you can like hold on for a second. He won't use up stamina if he just sits there, which is, you know, you think you think you would. So, I don't see him here. I guess they've re disappeared because of Link not being present. Okay. Looks like we're safe. Okay, so I'm going to activate the shrine, and then that's going to be the end of this section. So, we have shrine number three activated and ready to go. Night Raven is going to go ahead and sign off for this part two, and we will pick up in this shrine for part three. Thanks so much for watching part two. I hope it was helpful for you. And I hope that the next two parts will help you as well in the Great Plateau. And then on to Hyrule we go. So, again, thank you so much for watching this tutorial. Be sure to check out part one and stay tuned for three and four. And then any future videos I have um, continuing from that. There will be individual tutorials as far as like battle and things like that as well. And more in depth, I should say, for subjects like that. But yes, thank you so much for watching this tutorial. And that Raven signing off. Till next time. Bye.